All right, so today I'm going to talk a little bit about um, LLM agent frameworks. Um, so I wanted to talk about the AI side because um, a lot of the time at AI crypto events, we we end up talking about the, the crypto side, understandably. Um, and I kind of see it as my job to like evangelize all of the different stuff that's going on in AI because it's like there's really a lot and it's uh, it's a lot to keep up with. And I'd love to uh, to upskill, um, you know, a lot of people in the crypto space about about what's going on. So what are the opportunities in AI and crypto? Um, so crypto provides the infrastructure and tooling um, while you know, AI provides um, the promise of utility um, and increasing adoption, for example. Um, crypto has been interested in agent frameworks uh, and, you know, autonomous agents for a long time. Um, and uh, and then in the AI side, like recent advances have, uh, have like changed the way that we're creating uh, flows and agents. Um, so these are the kind of uh, opportunities and overlaps. And as I mentioned, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, uh, the advances on the AI side. Um, and also like, you know, the abstractions like, um, and all of this will lead to, uh, you know, hopefully standards in future. So what is prompt programming? Well, the big thing that changed with prompt programming, um, uh, it was enabled by these large language models um, where, you know, a single model can perform multiple tasks. And um, so they're more general. Before we would have had to train a model for for every different task, um, but now we can just go on to you know GPT three, ask it to summarize, ask it to extract text, and it can do all of these things. That's like quite a, rel a relatively new uh, thing. Um, prompt programming also uses the language model as just one component uh, in a larger system. So um, then we have other building blocks, for example, like tools, memory, um, and some others as well. Um, and it, what we can do is we can like compose chains or flows. Um, where you know different steps could be like a call to a language model, or it could be an API call to a different tool, um, or it could like you know store to memory or something like that. So you can really build these like complex apps um, um, where the language model is just one component. And I've he I heard a term I really liked. It's called like a no gradient architecture. Um, of course. Um, learning used to involve gradient descent uh, in, in machine learning. Uh, but now we figured out that we can actually learn without changing the weights of the model at all. Um, so we can like, you know, include different input and output uh, data samples in the in the prompt itself. Um, and the model will learn um, to change its behavior based on that prompt. Um, and this doesn't involve updating the weights at all, right? And we can even show them procedures about how to solve problems in, in the prompts as well. Um, um, and, and kind of like teach uh, uh, models to, to perform new tasks and learn new skills. I'm going to go through a few of the different frameworks because I think it's really interesting to, to look at the state of the art um, and the different abstractions and the way people are uh, trying to approach the problem. And then finally, uh, I'm going to talk about like um, how we can apply these to crypto frameworks. So one of the really interesting frameworks is uh, Llama Index. Uh, it focuses mostly on retrieval tasks. So for example, it can be used with question answering. Um, you might have seen some demos of this on Twitter. Um, so what the so what happens at the different steps with Lama Index? The first step is like let's say we want to answer questions about a document. The first thing we need to do is like uh, get chunks from that document. Um, um, so we use like some sort of chunker. Um, once we have the chunks, we can combine a bunch of different chunks uh, into what's called an index. So you can see in the top right there that we've got different nodes, which are different chunks of text, and they've all been stored in a, say, a vector database or something like that. Um, and they've been run through like a, an embedding model as well, so that they're not stored as text. They're actually stored as vectors. So you pass the text through the language model, and then you, at a certain you know layer in the language model, you you extract this like uh, this vector, which is basically like the language model's uh, understanding of that word or representation of that word. Um, and then that's what we store in the in the vector DB is this vector. Um, Lama index also have has these things called retrievers, um, which can like fetch from relevant nodes, and you can like uh, you know synthesize responses. And you can actually do some quite complex stuff like this. You can have like an index of indexes, um, and you can like have a router that routes between different indexes based on the user query. Langchain, I'm sure everyone has heard of. Um, they focus less on the retrieval step and like working with the data, and more on the stuff that happens after. So you can build like chains of LLM calls. You can also build agents, uh, and it has a bunch of building blocks uh, that are kind of shown on the right. So you have the language models. You also have like memories, uh, memory. You can store to memory. Um, you can create agents, as I mentioned before, um, and it's really quite flexible. A new one that's come out is called Semantic Kernel. Uh, it's by Microsoft. I really like their abstractions. Um, and I think they're like even better than Langchain. Um, so the kernel is kind of like the orchestrator. 
um, whose role it is to like, you know, um, uh, solve the user's query. Um, so it's kind of like the assistant itself, or you could call it like an agent. Um, its role is to solve uh, the user's query with like all of its available skills. Um, and in the bottom right, you can see like what the collection of skills looks like. So you might have, say, a registry of skills with skill A, skill B. Um, and then the final, uh, the lowest level is like these functions. So a skill is like a collection of different functions that can be used to achieve a certain uh, task. So some examples of skills are for uh, like question answering, summarization, coding, you know, telling a joke. It could be really uh, anything. Um, I think I really like the abstractions of Semantic Kernel because um, they overlap with this book that I read. Um, it's called Age of Invisible Machines, A Practical Guide to Creating a Hyper-Automated Ecosystem of Intelligent Digital Workers, which I think is definitely something that uh, a lot of people in the room will want to build. Um, instead of the kernel, they call it like an intelligent digital worker or an IDW. An IDW is made up of skills, and the skills are composed of microservices. So the microservices are kind of like the functions from before. And they also include like this concept of flows that isn't really in semantic kernel, as far as I could see. Flows are sequences of skills used to perform a task. Um, and I, I gave some examples of flows in a recent uh, like tweet thread that I did. So like find, chase, nudge, uh, question answering, summarization. I think there's like more than 20 uh, that they gave examples of in the book. Um, so yeah, now I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, Open AEA. Of course, David like uh, uh, covered a lot of this. Um, also, Open Autonomy. Um, so these are like crypto agent uh, frameworks. Um, so AEA stands for Autonomous Economic Agent. It focuses more so on like a single agent, which you know can interact with other agents, but uh, it's really just focused on uh, more so on single agents. Whereas Open Autonomy focuses on multi-agent systems. Um, I've just dived into the literature on multi-agent systems, which David mentioned goes back a long time. Uh, it's crazy how much is there, and like there's so many. It's such a goldmine just because like so much has been opened up with LLMs. Um, I'm just really excited to like um, explore all of this, you know, multi-agent system research with this new lens of LLMs. There's so many opportunities there. I think. So the cool thing about um, uh, Open AEA and Open Autonomy are that they have abstractions that are similar to Semantic Kernel. So for example, we have skills. Um, and there's also other overlaps, like for example, these finite state machines. Uh, uh, finite state machines are, are what are used to create like the functionality, and they're basically just like a graph-based version of a chain or a flow. That's kind of how I'm thinking about them. Um, so yeah, we're actually like uh, exploring working together with uh, Autonomous uh, and Valerie um, to basically integrate some of the ideas from like recent LLM frameworks uh, with crypto agent frameworks. Um, of course, crypto agent frameworks have been in development for a long time, um, uh, which is like a big advantage. But also, like you know, these new ones, uh, these new LLM frameworks uh, provide a, a whole bunch more utility uh, that we can apply to like a number of use cases. Um, okay. Um, so this is just a slide. I just wanted to put in an aside. Like, what is a what is an operating system? Uh, I've been diving into the history of this a little bit as well. So an OS is made up of a few different components. For example, a file system which is like, you know, connects it to different data sources, a kernel, which is like the bridge between hardware and software, or like it orchestrates things, um, and a shell, the part that the user interacts with. Um, so you might see a few similarities in the way that I've set up this presentation. Like for example, Llama index um, is like a new way of interacting with a file system through this, uh, th through use with, with large language models. And then we even saw that one of the LLM frameworks uh, uses uh, uh, the concept of a kernel, uh, which is inspired by an operating system. And then of course, like I didn't touch too much on what the user interface is, um, but that's another important aspect. Uh, some of the things that the kernel does are on the right, like process management, memory management. This all sounds quite similar to how these LLM apps work. Um, and an operating system provides a variety of APIs um, that allow them to interact with various aspects of the system. So a lot of this stuff is what we uh, are inspired by um, at Algovera. Um, and what we're trying to build with our product is basically an end-to-end -end solution uh, for, for creating customized versions of these LLM assistants and agents. And um, so we try to do like many different stages in the pipeline. So uploading and managing different data sources, you know, building LLM flows, uh, assistants and agents. Um, all of this is with no code, by the way. Then deploy these different services. So for example, deploying an assistant or an agent at various different interfaces. So it could be an API, or it could be uh, you know, a Chrome extension, or it could be a Discord bot. Um, and we're focusing on question answering assistance to start, but the plan is to like expand to more. So just to conclude, um, there's been a lot of uh, 
uh, recent breakthroughs in AI. Uh, for example, with the way that we build agents using LLMs, it's completely different. Um, it's still early with respect to frameworks for for LLM agents. Um, so, like you know, Langchain is so new, Llama Index is so new, um, and this is an advantage that crypto agent frameworks have uh, over these these new ones. And um, they've been in development for a relatively long period of time. Um, I really like the abstractions of the crypto agent frameworks, <clears throat> like OpenAEA and Open Autonomy. Um, and but the thing is, uh, you know, these uh, and I, I think David touched on this. You know, like um, the the agent frameworks haven't really happened uh, in crypto, uh, and I think you know LLMs are the are the the piece of the puzzle that we're missing. So with LLMs, we can combine them with crypto agent frameworks. Uh, we can get the best of like crypto infrastructure and like payments and all these sorts of things, while also getting the utility and functionality that AI provides. So yeah, that's it for me.